Medical tests are not always 100% accurate and we're going to look at two measures of accuracy sensitivity and specificity they're probably the most common measures of accuracy so for example here is uh, the tuberculosis skin test or the tuberculin skin test it has a sensitivity of 0.59 to 1.0 or 59 percent actually and a specificity of 0.95 to 1.0 or 95 percent there's all different types of TB tests here's a TB, TB spot test it's a new one and it boasts that it has a sensitivity of 95 percent <coughs> and a um, specificity of 98 percent and uh, so when you go online you see all different types of medical tests and some are more accurate than others okay in this video we'll compare the accuracy of three types of tests for TB tuberculosis examples one two and three okay so example one we'll look at culture techniques right so um, Imagine a thousand people display symptoms of tuberculosis. They are tested for TB using culture techniques, an expensive method that can take six weeks for a result, up to six weeks. This is considered the gold standard medical test for TB, pretty much 100% accurate. 830 fe people are found to have TB. Okay, So what we're going to do is fill out this table for this perfectly accurate, pretty much perfectly accurate um, test. So what I want you to tell me is if 830 people are found to have TB, how many people do not have TB? Write it down. So it's a thousand people uh, measured. 830 have it. Who doesn't have it? 170, right? So basically this is such a great test that if you have the disease you'll be tested positive. So 830 people are tested positive, it means they have the disease. If you have the disease, you won't be given a negative test. This won't happen. So there'll be zero patients who test negative who actually have the disease. Okay. Now, if we take the patients that do not have the disease, and of course, we'll just give a little total here, right? So total here is, this is all the patients who have the disease. 830 test positive, zero test negative, right? So the total there, you add them together, you get 830, right? Now we're going to take the patients who do not have the disease, 170. How many of these are going to test positive if this test is so good? Zero, right? How many of these patients are going to test negative if the test is so good? Now they don't have the disease, so the test is going to, it's perfect test, so it'll say, okay, 170 of you do not have the test right and the total uh, who don't have the disease course is 170 right so this is what a perfect test looks like there's no such thing as a person having the disease testing negative doesn't happen there's no such thing as a person who doesn't have the disease testing positive but in real life things aren't perfect so for example if we take the TB skin test we do indeed have people who have the disease testing negative and we have people who do not have the disease testing positive and we're going to look at two measures for accuracy we're going to see how well the test detects the presence of TB out of the people that have it how well the test detects the absence of TB out of those who don't have it Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do simply is, so and, and once again this is a TB skin test. Now um, it's been around for 60 years and it's not as perfect as using the culture techniques, is it? So I guess before we go any further, why do we even bother with the skin test? Why don't we just do, use this test all the time? Okay, any idea? The reason we don't always use the perfect gold standard test for every single patient in the world is because the gold standard, so, 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 and this isn't just for TB, but for all types of diseases, um, 
you know, HIV or herpes or um, smallpox or whatever. There's a gold standard test, right? That that's pretty much 100% accurate. Only that the gold standard tests in medicine are really expensive, and they often take a long time for the results to come back. So practically, they're not um, they're not feasible for a, a for a lot of people to uh, to to use. So what most of us get is um, the cheap version, like the TB skin test, right? So anyway. How well does this test detect the presence of TB? What we're going to do is let's take the TB skin test, right? And we're going to look at the people who have the disease. And how many people altogether have so these are the ones that have the disease, these are the ones that do not have the disease, right? How many people altogether have the disease? Give the total. You add this plus this. What does that make? Add them up. 830 right so these are the same people only this time so we're, we're actually you know we're what we're really doing here is testing the test we're testing to see how well the skin test is right <laughs> they're the same thousand people they already know these 830 already know they have to have TB from from this study but we're testing to see how accurate the skin test is the first thing we're going to do is see how well does it pick up that these 830 have the disease. So, how are you going to answer this question? Well, you could say not very well because 340 of them who have the disease were tested negative. So, you know, it's crap. It's useless, right? Well, that's one way of describing it, but we're actually going to describe it with a number, with a percentage. So, what we're going to do is give the percentage of infected people that tested positive, right? Percentage of people who have disease testing positive. That test. So write this down, please. We're going to give the percentage of people who have the disease that test positive. In other words, you have the disease, now what? What's the chances the test will tell you you have it, right? Well, let's see. How do we calculate that? So, we look at this column, of course, and if you take 490 people tested positive out of 830 people who actually had the disease, right? So, um, that is what we're going to calculate. If you take your 490, put it out of 830, what does that give you? Zero point five nine zero three six. etc. Round that to a percentage with one decimal place. So percentage with one decimal place, you're going to move decimal point one, two spaces to the right and that is 59 point and there's a zero and then there's a three so we round down so 59 point zero percent or 59 percent, right? So this is the percentage of people who have the disease who are told they have the disease. So because 830 people have the disease and only 490 of them are actually uh you know tested positive. So this is how well the test detected the presence of TB, right? And that's called the um sensitivity that's the sensitivity, right? How sensitive it is. Now we're just going to see how well did the test detect the absence of TB, right? So if we just take the people who don't have the disease, the total amount is 8 plus 162, 170. 
170 people we know from the gold standard test definitely don't have TB. Right? We figured out 170 people definitely don't have TB. Alright? Now, they were given the skin test. Eight of them were told that they do have TB because they tested positive. 162 were told they don't. So it was it was fine for 162, but these eight were given a scare, right? They were scared, right? So how well did the test detect the absence of TB? In other words, what percentage of people who don't have disease Um, actually tested negative. Can you figure that out? What percentage of the people who don't have the disease were actually tested negative? These are the people who don't have the disease. Out of the 170 of them, 162 tested negative, 8 tested positive. What percentage tested negative? You would take 162 and divide that by 170, right? 162 is a percentage of 170. So plug that in your calculator and we get 0 0.9529 etc. We're going to round that to a percentage with one decimal place. How do you do that? Move the decimal point one, two spaces to the right, and there's a two, and then there's a nine, so we round up, so that's approximately 95.3%. Okay? So, now so, what we're going to do now is introduce two new words the, sp um, the specificity and the sensitivity. The sensitivity of the test is sensitive to the disease in you. Sensitivity. Okay? The sensitivity of this skin test is 59%. The specificity specifically is able to figure out that you don't have it. Right? So sensitivity figures out that that the disease is present, specificity figures out that disease is absent, right? So when you ask how well does the test detect the presence of TB, you're asking how sensitive is the test, right? And when you ask how well does the test detect the absence of TB? Like if I don't have it, you know, is it going to tell me that? You're asking how specific is the test, right? So that's the medical jargon. And um, the other way to look at this number sensitivity and specificity is um, and I guess we'll, we'll, we'll do that after example three. So, so that that's enough for now um, uh, on the the wording. We'll come back to this, uh, but now we'll go on to example three and calculate the sensitivity and the specificity of the test. Okay. So here's example three. You're going to figure out how well the test detects the presence of TB. So you're going to get the sensitivity. and then you're going to see how well the test detects the absence of TB, you're going to get the specificity. Okay, so um, so this is a different test for TB, it's, it's a very accurate test, it's the new T-spot test um, where it measures T-cell levels in the blood, it's quick and inexpensive and so um, it can be widely used and it's not perfect but it is much more accurate than the skin test so press pause and calculate the sensitivity for this test
see if you can do it the same way as we did the last one did you try it so I hope you tried it I'll go over it with you now so sensitivity is we just look at the people who have the disease we see how well the test detected the presence of TV in other words out of all these people who have the disease what percentage of them did in fact test positive so if I add these two numbers up I get 830 the same 830 people they're taking another TB test right so we're testing the testing the test really so how many of these people how many what percentage of the infected tested positive that's 788 infected people tested positive out of 830 right what does that give Nine zero point nine four nine three, etc. Round that to a percentage with one decimal place. So I move the decimal place one two spaces to the right, and we get ninety four point nine percent. So the sensitivity of this test ninety four point nine percent. If you have TB, it's probably going to detect that you do, right? What is the specificity of the test? Press pause and calculate this. Did you try it? I hope you tried it anyway. So I'm going to do it now. So spec how specific is the test means just take the people who don't have the disease. How many altogether? Two of them tested positive and 168 tested negative. But, but altogether we have 170 people that definitely don't have the disease. So how bad is the test for people who don't have it? Um, it's not too bad. There's only a couple of people were given a shock told that they have TB when in fact they don't. So uh, not as bad as the skin test where eight people who don't have the, the disease were told that they do have it. Right? They were tested positive, right? Where they don't have it, they were tested positive, right? So, um, what we do is to get specificity, we, we find the percentage of people who do not have the disease and put that, uh, and were tested negative, and put that over all the people who do not have the disease. So, um, we take our 168 people who don't have the disease and test negative and put that over all the people who don't have the disease. What does that give us? Zero point nine eight eight two, etc. Round that to a percentage with one decimal place. So 98.8%. Okay. So what we've done is um, so to really finish defining this and coming up with a formula. Um, these are the people that have the disease, right? 830. This test said that 788 of them have the disease. So it tested positive for 788. So this number is true, isn't it? Okay. Is this number true or false? 42. This is false, isn't it? Okay. This is... Um, these are the people who have the disease. This is a true number and it's a true positive because it's true and the, it's a true result. It's a true positive test result, right? 780 people have the disease tested positive. This one is 42 people who have the disease that tested negative, right? That's a false result. It's a false negative. Now look at these numbers. How would you describe these? Let's start with this one. Is this a true number or a false number? 
Is this true or false? Is it right or wrong? This is a person who does not have a disease and they've been tested positive. That's false, isn't it? Okay, and it's a false what? It's a false positive. False positive means you're tested positive, but it's wrong. <laughs> you're told you have a disease, but you really don't. Okay. What about this number, 168? What would you? How would you describe that? Well, it's true. You don't have the disease. You're tested negative. It's a true result. True test result. It's a true negative. You're told you don't have the disease, and in fact, you don't have the disease, right? So when we did, when we figured out sensitivity, we took the people who were true positives, the people who really did have the disease who were tested positive, out of all the people who really had the disease. Okay. So you could say that sensitivity. equals, right, true positives out of all the people who have the disease. That would be the true positives plus the false negatives. These are all the people who have the disease. Okay, so that's a formula for sensitivity. And specificity, can you come up with a formula for specificity? Well, we took the number who were told were given a negative test result who really didn't have the disease. So we take the true negatives and put that over all the people who don't have the disease. All of these guys. False positives plus true negatives, right? So, here's our formula for sensitivity, here's our formula for specificity. So, we can also define sensitivity and specificity in terms of probability. And we can do that as follows. Well, it's a, sensitivity is the probability the test will detect the presence of TB, right? So, write this down so we can try and understand it. Imagine that you know for a fact that you actually do indeed have TB, right? Now you don't want to be told that you don't have it if you do. You need to get treatment, right? You don't want a false negative. You don't want a negative result when you actually have TB. So imagine now you really do have TB. What sensitivity is going to tell what sensitivity give, gives is the probability of the test detecting the TB in you. Okay? So the prob if you have TB uh, sensitivity is a probability test tells you this or detects the TB in you, right? Specificity. Imagine now you don't have TB, great. You know for a fact you don't have TB, right? What specificity does is it gives you um, the probability that the test will say, yeah, sure, you don't have Because you don't want the test to tell you, if you don't have the disease, you don't want the test to tell you that you do. You don't want a positive result when you don't have it. You don't want a false positive, right? So, the, if there's a 98.8% .8 chance that if you don't have it, you'll actually get a negative result, right? So, the specificity gives you the probability that the test will detect the absence of TB. Probability test will tell you if you don't have it, when you don't have it, right? So if you don't have TB, it's specificity is the probability that the test tells you this, right? So really quickly, use the formula or or whatever you like to give the sensitivity and the specificity of um, in example one. Press pause and do that. I'm going to do it in three seconds, so please press pause and do that.
Okay. So really quickly, the sensitivity in example one was 100%. You took the 830 people who actually have the disease, they all tested positive, so that's 830 true positives out of over the true positives plus the um, uh, false negatives, and we get 830 over 830, which is one or 100%. Now, did you get the specificity? Uh, specificity? Press pause and do specificity if you haven't yet. Okay, I'm going to show you now. Hope you pressed pause and tried it. It is 170 people who don't have the disease and they all tested negative out of 170 plus zero. There's nobody who doesn't have the disease and tested positive. So we get one or 100% for specificity, right?